Why go to class when you can play video games? All right, so it's no secret that I love video games, but I admit it's not always the best use of my time when I could be spending it by learning to program in JavaScript or rebuild a car engine or even speak in Portuguese. But could video games be more than just a fun waste of time? I mean, why do we play games in the first place? Well, there are a lot of theories, but one popular thought is that it allows us to learn new skills in a low-stakes environment. And it's not just us. Kittens will pounce on each other to learn hunting skills. Puppies will wrestle with each other to learn fighting and self-defense. So could a video game actually teach us skills we can use in the real world? Well, some scientific studies suggest that, yes, they can. In 2010, a study showed that people who played a fast-paced first-person shooter action game like Call of Duty 2 could actually make decisions 25% faster than a control group with no loss in accuracy. And a 2013 study found that people who played strategy games like StarCraft II actually had better cognitive flexibility, which is your ability to flip between different types of mental tasks. And think about that. Those were accidental side effects. What if we were to build a video game specifically to power up our brains and learn new skills and even educate us on new topics like quantum physics? Okay, so the quantum world is weird. It doesn't make sense on a classical level, and we might be able to learn the principles in the abstract, but it never really feels right. Enter the Google Quantum AI Lab, which in 2013 released QCraft. Now that's a mod for the popular game Minecraft, which gives the blocks in the game special quantum properties like superposition and entanglement. But why should we stop there? What if we had quantum physicists team up with game developers to create a fast-paced action platformer where you play as a photon racing through lenses and half-silvered mirrors with full quantum effects in play, like superposition, so you have two pathways open simultaneously until an outside observation causes the wave function to collapse and you're down to one. Now this is a truly unique way that video games can teach us about quantum physics. You wouldn't just be talking about the rules of the quantum world, you would actually feel them at play. It doesn't stop there. There's no reason why video games can't exist side by side with lectures and textbooks in the classroom, or maybe even replace them. The game company Valve has an initiative to provide copies of the game Portal 2 to classrooms so students can use it to learn things like math and physics and critical thinking skills. There's also very skill-specific style games out there like code spells, where you play as a wizard and your spells are made by creating lines of code in the Java programming language. Now, if we take that concept and go a step further, you could level up your character not by destroying an endless number of trolls in a dungeon, but by creating increasingly complex lines of code. You're actually leveling up your brain and learning real-world skills. When you think about it, games are the perfect way to learn skills in all sorts of ways. First of all, games are self-motivating. You can learn at your own pace and you can lose yourself in the learning process, which minimizes distractions. So why should learning and play compete against each other when the two activities could actually be the exact same thing? All right, I've got a question for all of you. It's your job to design a video game that's going to teach someone a new set of skills. What set of skills are you going to teach and how do you go about doing it? I want to hear your most creative answer in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe to our channel and also share the video with your friends. And once you're done with all that, it's playtime. And by playtime, I mean watch these.